Hello everyone. I am Harshita. I hope you all are doing fine in this time of Corona and you're all safe and your loved ones and family members are safe. You're taking important measures, not going out very much and uh, still trying to be hopeful that we will get some freedom to move, some freedom to be ourselves. But uh, nonetheless, this is time for us to reflect on ourselves how and what we have done to this world and how we can go back to connecting more with our roots so yeah so as i said i'm prashita i am an alumni of design and innovation academy i had graduated in 2016 from the college and i started working with uh, Akaro, a textile and fashion design brand. I worked with them for two years and uh, after that I, I left um, as a very conscious decision to not, not contribute to any industry which is exploiting and damaging the environment. So, yeah. So I was a fashion design graduate and uh, I currently am living in Orwell. It's a beautiful, beautiful forest city in Tamil Nadu and, uh, and uh, I am majorly involved with, the, with the reforestation and water conservation projects. I am currently conducting my research on obtaining fibers from agricultural waste and then converting into it into textile and creating a cheaper polyester or like creating organic clothing but much less expensive because I believe organic can be much cheaper we don't need to pay so much of money in order to in order to uh, wear or live sustainably so yes I am going to talk about today sustainable design practices is going to be the subject or topic which comes from me to you so before we dive deep into sustainable design practices I'm sure you must have all heard about sustainability but uh, let's just sum it up so sustainability means uh, making use of natural renewable resources in a way that people can continue to rely on it for longer time so um, one myth we think anything which comes from nature is sustainable that's not true so all the fossil fuel all the crude oil we use for our bikes and cars and motor engines mm -mm, not so sustainable something which should not be happening but it happens on the other hand having a mango tree in your backyard and getting mango each year from that tree eating it is very sustainable so sustainability is directly proportional to renewability so something which you can renew in the longer term is sustainable something things which you cannot is not so sustainable so that's a little bit of definition of sustainability if you want to dive more into it read more about it you can find it on internet so many sources to read it, to understand it and to work on it um, let's see so something which is sustainable development comes out of three different aspects a social economic and environmental so sustainability equals to social development economic de development and environmental development and all when we work towards combining all these three forces we live our lives sustainably and uh, so today we are going to talk about sustainable design practices. I, since I was a fashion design graduate, I spent a lot of my time in reading about clothes and uh, when I was a 
student at DIA, I remember we would go for fabric sourcing and we would be given a list of fabrics, like 50 different kinds, and we would go to different shops in Nehru, Nehru place, and Seelam for to collect the fabrics. And uh, I would always feel sad while collecting them because so many of them, like, so many of the fabrics, more than 60% were polyester based fabrics. They were not organic, they weren't cotton, they weren't wool, they weren't silk, they were polyesters. And uh, and when I was studying, it was not such a, yes, there was a subject called, like there were a few classes on sustainable designs and uh, how to create, like how you make cotton and uh, how to make linen and things like that, but uh, the focus was not. To not use these fabrics and it always troubled me because these fabrics never felt great on my skin I never enjoyed wearing them I didn't like the texture or feel of them so my journey to wanting to be more sustainable started there I believe and uh, so I ended up working with all hand woven cottons for my graduation project and uh, trying to use as little technology as possible but uh, i still used chemical dyes which was not nice and uh, laser cut because it was required for the, the the textile i was developing at the moment anyways so yeah so sustainable design practices are what can we do as we call ourselves designers what practices can we apply in our life which could be sustainable so let's say we study and uh, Zara comes up with if I remember correctly I haven't shopped in a while I think 8 or 12 collections per year you know it better because you're studying fashion right now it's not very sustainable in the first place the company itself is not very sustainable the way things are produced is not sustainable so what are different practices we can apply in our lives and in our design science to make it more sustainable so as you all are studying right now and you you make so many of the collections so many design collections every day every week every month every six months you come up with new collections on paper if not in real on paper for sure and uh, we all live with this <coughs> excuse me just a minute and uh, we all live with this idea oh one day one day i'm going to make this beautiful dress i designed or this beautiful suit i designed or this beautiful wedding couture I designed a reality and boom that will be the day I arrive or that is going to be the day I launch my design brand is going to be the day I arrive and everything will be beautiful so I just want to tell you the way we are conditioned to think because the world runs this way that the uh, more is better is untrue so that's the first first uh, thing about sustainability you need to know is refuse or reduce so you don't need to buy a piece of clothing if you already have 10 which can full which can help you I mean which can be of use for you and you don't need another dress for someone's birthday party but you still buy it out of need out of no not out of need you buy it out of your want out of your desire out of your greed there's very important uh, thing which uh, i read when i was uh, when i came to dia and uh, uh, when it was my orientation week and this designer Rakesh Agarwal, I don't know if he's still designing, but he, I mean, if he still ru is running the company, but he was quite a big deal back then and uh, in 2012. And he, he said one thing which stick, did stick with me for till now. 
and a lot of you know the definition of design also says that design comes out of the need of others and sadly today we design out of greed of others so please understand there is a big difference in making something out of the need and making something out of the greed when you make something out of the greed which is is this piece of clothing or is this piece of furniture or is this piece of uh, textile really required who will benefit from it who will not benefit from it what better will it give to the world other than decorating it these are the questions you need to ask yourself then if it's not required it's not so sustainable to make it in the first place there is no need for such so first r is reduce or reuse which is uh, so yes refuse or reduce which is yes so you stop i stopped buying clothes i think 3 years back and i started stitching my own clothes and i think 2 years back i stopped that too and in the last year and a half i have not shopped anything i have not made any new clothes i have been constantly traveling from one place to the other with my backpack and um, i have roughly 8 to 10 clothes right now and they work for me you know i only have what i need and nothing else is required and these this last year and a half i i wore them on and on and on again and again and again and nothing changed i could live my life just just every day else while when i was studying i remember at that point when i was working i had more than 200 clothes in my closet so it was a big switch for me but uh, and it took me the day i realized that all this external concealing behavior and pattern we have of buying new things showing it off is uh, causing this world a big crash down and is not fulfilling myself in any any ways because i am not happy buying more clothes you know i my life doesn't get better it's emotional buying sometimes helps but nothing changes so so you stop look around you what you need what you don't need and then what you don't need you don't invite that you don't buy that you don't waste your money on something which you will not use in the next 6 months very simple reuse again very very important sustainable t factor is reuse we often talk about reusing but how much do i do we often reuse like uh, let's say you don't uh, oh well i think you all must have gone through somebody could have taught you so let's keep these details short so that i can talk more about the experience i have so yes reuse is using something again and again and again and again and again and then comes recycle or upcycle when you used something again and again and again and then there comes like i have a top beautiful top i've worn it multiple multiple times and then there comes a point when it got torn i cannot wear it anymore i try to fix it i cannot fix it anymore to be wear worn as a top then i make a bag out of it like a tote bag and i i'm recycling or upcycling it into something which is further used and then i use the tote bag and eventually after one year or six months it gets more torn off and now it cannot be converted into anything else but because we use only i use only cottons and linens and fabrics which are which are natural though this is not natural but uh, i didn't buy it so it's a second hand what i'm wearing um then i 
convert it into compost which is good soil for the earth and it has a purpose it serves the purpose so reduce reuse recycle refuse so these are very important factors to to, to keep in mind when we talk about sustainable design practices what are different examples of sustainable design practices so in india we don't have so much but you have good example of um there are these shops which are called second hand shops which are quite common in europe here we don't have one i think there is an online platform where you can buy and sell old clothes but i don't know the website and i don't know if it's still active or not somebody shared it with me two years back i have been wanting to start a second hand shop in india especially in a place like delhi because when i was again growing up i didn't like wearing other people's clothes like second hand was bad term for me and there's nothing bad about it like we many of you must be living in in the hostel and uh, we share we i also lived there for 3 years so we all all the friends we share each other's clothes and we talk and and uh, what is needed we just do it you know if i have a dress somebody else needs to borrow they borrow it and uh, that's how it functions you don't need to buy necessarily for an event so second hand shops are the shops which uh, basically get clothes from people who don't have the need to wear them and then these clothes are washed ironed well put exhibited in a shop and are sold for much less price to people who are in need of these clothes so they are they exist in europe many 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 second hand shops i was in kenya few months back and uh, there they are called kikombas from uh, and in kenya you get clothes from this from europe from the states and they all come as second hand clothes and then you can just buy them so you don't you're not you're still buying which is what is necessary but you are not buying something which is new in in a way you're resisting against the the big corporate economy which which is damaging us individually as a society and uh, our environment all together so you have reduced your consumption and you don't spend so much money but you still buy what you need from the sources where you can the other very good example for sustainable design practice to come in action is free stores and so free stores are beautiful amazing concept if any of you have good enough money and you want to establish this uh, please do it's a uh, win win so beautiful free stores as the name says are the places where you can just uh, go and pick whatever you like out of no cost we have a f- one free store in orville and there's another free store in orville in a forest where i lived for a few months now where so i have let's say 10 clothes and out of these 10 the other four i've become big i've become fat i don't wear them anymore but they're good clothes huh they still somebody could wear them so i go and put them i wash them and i put them in that free store and whosoever is in need will come and take it and start wearing it so your clothes you know often like i struggled with this a lot when i was studying or i had so many clothes and so many beautiful ones that sometimes i just wanted to throw them away because i haven't worn them in quite some time but i couldn't because they were expensive and i i couldn't find somebody who wanted to wear them because i lived an isolated life in an apartment and i didn't know my neighbor so i didn't know but uh, so having stores like these really helps Uh, so yeah so free stores or free boxes you also have a lot of places in, in europe again where you can just 
uh, put up a box people who don't need their shoes their clothes they just dump it in the box and or people who need it they collect it from the box so that's again a very very beautiful practice to bring to life and uh, it works on give and receive the other example very beautiful one is swap shops so what swap shops are that uh, let's say i don't want to wear this top anymore but i want to wear something else you know i don't want to repeat my clothes again and again and i don't want to spend my money on buying and i should not because no not fair so i go to a store where i can take something else in return of my this top i don't use money i just swap using clothes so i take something else and i leave this top there somebody else will come with something else and take this top and leave something else there so in a way you keep on regulating and uh, you don't add to the uh, add you don't spend more money on to feeling exclusive and uh, again you reduce your usage you reduce your consumption it's very important um there are i was recently two months back in kenya i was there for three months working again on a reforestation project and uh, and i was educating women there on menstrual hygiene and also i had to talk with the students on sustainable design practices so one aspect is uh, and that's what i'm going to talk now is so yes i educated myself on menstrual hygiene it was a personal project which i did in kenya and in uganda where i traveled lived with the communities lived with the samburus which are the tribal people of kenya they are sister tribe of masai tribe masai mara national park we all know and there lives this tribe which is called masai tribe so i was living with the samburus and uh, i spoke about menstrual hygiene there why it's so important to take care of our bodies and what periods mean and why are they important why do they happen to us what ovulation means what and uh, it was really beautiful to share and to learn from them and for them to know some technical and some not so technical sides of it it's interesting um, it was very, very interesting for them to to understand why they get certain pains when they do and uh, how they can alleviate alleviate those pains during their menstruation so how how can they plan to not uh, basically how can they plan their pregnancy beforehand if they want to get pregnant or if they don't want to get pregnant depending on their period so it was beautiful and as a um, i did a two day sh- workshop with each group i did i did train more over 150 women including kenya and in uganda and currently i'm working on a book which uh, will talk about my experience there so so yeah so what i did was because i studied fashion and i knew how to stitch i gave them a workshop on talking about menstrual hygiene and the second was i helped them stitch their own reusable cloth pads because kenya given the country's economy is really down government does not support so much with menstrual products there so a lot of young girls miss their schools they miss their classes they don't go out of their houses because they are on their periods and they don't have anything to protect them and they don't use they sometimes use the old traditional cloth which is not so nice it can cause various diseases and infections to them it's very very unhealthy so so for me that was a big concern so and uh, so yeah there is something called reusable cloth pads which i'm sure are not so famous in delhi at all or in noida uh, i use them 
so I did show them how to stitch their own pads and how to find the material so we would collect old cotton fabrics from different places we would find old raincoat or old tent sheet or old uh, umbrella plastic and uh, needles and threads and scissors and uh, I made patterns of making the pad and uh, we stitched them together and uh, and uh, by the end of workshop each woman had made her own cloth pad and then they used them and they found them comfortable it was a very very beautiful experience I continued doing the same in India too and with Sadna Forest, another beautiful NGO I have been working with since last one year and uh, and I was supposed to go to Hyderabad to do the same with in different schools in a village called Zahirabad but Corona happened so my movement is pretty restricted so that was my way of uh, bringing another sustainable design practice into our lives to make something uh, which could be used again and again and again and is more sustainable when we buy a plastic pad it lasts for five to six hours and uh, what happens then well okay you need to throw it in the dustbin i used to do that all the time and after that we don't know what the hell happens to our bloody plastic pad polyester pad it ends up in landfill and it for one plastic pad to decompose to break down it takes 500 to 800 years which is very scary so it's bad 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 while as one cloth pad lasts if you use it in a nicer way lasts from three to five years decomposes easily because it's cloth which is organic if not organic still preferably cotton or some natural fabric and uh, and it's washable so you wash it each time and the water which you use for washing goes into the water which you use for washing you can water your mango tree cashew tree baby plants with it really good human blood or any kind of blood is very very good for the soil so it goes back to the soil and you can keep on using these pads again and again and again and if you would want i will be soon doing an online tutorial on how to stitch your own cloth pad and i will be talking more about it so if you all would be interested in it uh, dia can ask me to send a link further which i'll be happy to do so so that's another way of uh, um, bringing a sustainable design practice in your life. Um, what else can we do? What else you all think can, can be done in order for us to live a sustainable life or sustainable design practice? Uh, practicing the sustainability aspect of design so um, I'll be ending my talk now because I I don't know if I overwhelmed you all because I do know that this comes from a very different mindset and you might not understand it or you might be able to but uh, these were a few of sustainable design practices which one can bring into their lives doesn't matter if you're a fashion designer or you're going to be an interior designer cement is that if you want to make something inside your house so natural construction is the way to go so it's always very important to find the sustainability aspect ask yourself why am i doing it why is it important what impact is it going to bring is it going to bring to other people's lives what impact will it have on the environment what impact it's going to have on the nature what impact it's going to on it is going to have on myself is it really important is it not if not then why not and if it is then what is the way i'm going to achieve this important thing 
and how I can incorporate nature in it, how I can not be alien to nature, how I can be more connected to the roots, to to the environment we are born in, instead of just not living inside the concrete box which we call apartments these days. How could we um, incorporate one with the other? So these are a few things. Okay, and another thing. I don't know if I already mentioned it or not, but I would like to end on it. So I quit design, fashion design, because for me the exploitation which exists in the industry and uh, the way people and resources, nothing is valued, was too harsh. And uh, I chose not to be a part of the system till the time I can change the system. So I have been since last year working or I am researching um, on creating, uh, I have, I'm working basically on a project which is called Disrupt the Textiles from Organic and Agricultural Wastes to Biodegradable Fabric Solutions. So my focus is that I find local farms with whatever organic waste they produce, let's say when you drink sugarcane juice and the leftover sugarcane fiber can very easily be converted into fabric, so do it. Or uh, pineapple leaves, for example, very easy to make fiber fabric out of it. Do it. So I'm trying to come up with more solutions and uh, yeah, I've already extracted a few fibers so far. I am looking for, I mean, I will be in some time again applying for some fundings for my project to be sponsored so that I can work on it full time and uh, come up with the beautiful design solutions because I do believe design is amazing and it's beautiful and uh, we design our lives we design every single day of our lives and we design the world around us it's just we need to understand we should design it when it's required we shouldn't design it when we want because it's very important to differentiate between need and greed so do what you need to do and you will ace in it and uh, yeah so good luck with your lives and uh, I hope you enjoy your time study hard grasp as much as you can find the right path for you and when your heart tells you it's right it is going to be right so good luck have a great day bye bye